Now, let's hear some of the sound from uh, this man I interviewed, Mike. Uh, we were just at the concert there, and Jason Aldean was playing, and uh, kind of sounded like some fireworks going off. And then uh, I think there was like the first kind of volley, and then all of a sudden the second volley, my buddy's like, I just got hit, you know, and uh, got hit three times. And then people started diving for the ground, and it just continued, and it was pretty much chaotic. Um, uh, lots of people got hit, lots of people were getting... Uh, it, it took a while to get him out. We had to get him over the fence and hiding under the stage for a while, you know, to be safe. And finally we had to move him because he had three chest wounds. And uh, got him out here. We got four people in the back of a truck, but then we got turned around because there was an active shooter. So we couldn't go down the street. So we finally got an ambulance right here on this, this right across the street here. And uh, uh, got two of the guys in. And basically the one guy ended up dying in my arms because he, uh, he was bleeding. And my buddy got in there. We got three more people in the ambulance and so they but I just got messages my buddy is gonna be okay so I mean I'm the guy who got hit three times is gonna be okay yeah perhaps a small silver lining tonight and right now in the background you may be able to hear ambulances and fire engines moving towards the scene this is still very much an active scene right now um, you can see the the police checkpoint behind me people are congregating around here uh, trying to figure out what went on also they're being blocked from going towards the strip that's where their hotels are there's another fire and rescue ambulance going towards the scene. Um, this is probably going to be happening through the night. Um, and what you heard from Mike is also how chaotic the scene was. It took a while to evacuate the wounded because that gunfire seemed to be going on for a significant period of time, certainly long enough to pin police down and to make them fear that there may be multiple shooters. Also, many of the officers out here, not all of them have ARs, many of them just have uh, semi-automatic pistols and you can't go up against someone who's armed with an automatic rifle or an assault rifle when you have uh, a pistol. So the police weren't really it seems capable of, of moving in that quickly to take this person down, but I imagine the tactical teams did move in quickly enough. We do have it confirmed right now that a shooter is down. Again, we don't know how many shooters there were, but we know at least one of the shooters from tonight's attack uh, appears to be down. That according to the Las Vegas Police Department. So hopefully this event is over right now, but clearly the cleanup and the investigation is going to last for many hours, possibly days. Hopefully there aren't any more wounded who've been scattered about or taken to other locations to try to seek shelter and now need immediate uh, medical assistance. Hopefully all of those people have been picked up and evacuated to the hospital. Matt, I, I believe you're there with Mike Kronk, who you were speaking with earlier. That's right. Mike Kronk, we found him sitting actually right here on the curb. and. Uh, he wasn't wearing a shirt because he had used it to stanch the blood of one of his friends and he was sitting there with his head in his hands um, and there's still blood on his hands and um, he had been through one of the most harrowing experiences I've ever heard and we just started talking to him and Mike maybe you can just tell me your story I mean where were you tonight? Um, we were at the Route 91 concert and uh, been there all day waiting for Jason Aldean and um real surreal actually you know everybody's having a good time and then all of a sudden you hear some popping going on and I don't think anybody really understood what it was and then uh, my buddy after a little bit of popping my buddy's like I got hit so my buddy got shot three times and then everybody knew there was a shooter so everybody pretty much dove on top of each other got down it was a lot of chaos um, people trampling each other and you know trying to get away and uh, it was a uh, it seemed like forever you know um, but uh, we we're just trying to take care of the people that are wounded. You know, there were a lot of people that were really selfless and actually stayed with people. Um, I'm just gonna hold it closer to you, Mike. Um, now, now you're an avid hunter, and so you recognized immediately that this was not just gunfire, but it was automatic gunfire yes. coming in rapid bursts. Yeah, it was. It was very obvious. Whoever was shooting was. It was a full, fully automatic, and they had to reload. So, whether there's one person or two, but it was there was a break between clips being you know shot out now you describe it rather casually but you know your best friend you're here on your 48th birthday trip you're a retired teacher and you came with your best friend and he took three bullets to the chest as close as I am to you right now true um, it was uh, it was hard you know I saw him there and I was like I wasn't gonna leave him so we had to you know 
there was an EMT there. Somebody was an EMT. There was lots of you know awesome military, ex-military people that were trained. So we got him compressed, and that's you know kept compression on his chest. He actually put his finger in the hole, you know, that, so we you know don't move your finger, and we could keep the compression on, um, and, and then probably stayed like that for at least 10 minutes, 15 minutes, before uh, we finally made a decision that we needed to get him over the fence. So we get him under the stage, so at least we knew we were safe dealing with him. And so you and three other guys had to physically haul him over a fence in order to get him under the stage yep. and to a protected area. Yeah, we got him over and then slid him under the stage, and we were under there. And another another awesome lady came over um, and, and helped compress. And so there was multiple. There's you know, I am no hero, but there was tons of heroes out there that were. There's a lot of heroes out there. It's pretty astonishing to think that. You guys were physically plugging his bullet wounds with your fingers. Yeah, he, Rob, with my friend Rob, he had his finger in the hole. He's like, don't take it out. He's like, leave your finger there, we'll compress over the top of it. So we just had, you know, shirts and whatever we could, you know. And then you couldn't get him out. There was no ambulance there because there was still an active shooting situation. Correct. And how did you manage to get him out? Well, we got, uh, there was a couple... Uh, I want to say they're EMT first responders, and we got we we got him out from under the stage and ran him around the back, and we got him on a cart, and we drove around the side where there was a triage center, and one of the cops we were going to throw him in his car, but then something happened where he had to go, and we ended up loading up a pickup truck, a civilian pickup truck with four wounded people to get him, but we got turned around. Because, four wounded people in that pickup in the truck, back of the truck, as well as you guys. Yes. Yeah, there was uh, one person with each person, so eight of us in the back of a pickup, and we got turned around, so we couldn't go. And then uh, we ended up right back here on this street, right where those cop cars are, and uh, got him in an ambulance. And that's where one young man uh, passed away, you know, as we were carrying him out of the. One of the guys you were with actually died. It was somebody I did not know, but somebody was, in the truck with you. Yes, we had him in the ambulance, and like we were loading him in the ambulance, and. Uh, the guy said, you know, let's let's set him down here. And so I set him down with myself and the young man passed away. He literally died in your arms. He did. It's been a tough night. For so many people here. So many people died and are wounded. And it's very sad. I'm sorry I had to experience that. It must have just been. Me too. I'm glad some people are safe and, you know, it's a, it's a terrible tragedy. I mean, I don't know what else, what other words you can use for it. We got a, a piece of good news a few minutes ago, though. Your friend Rob, the one who was shot three times, including bullets to the chest, his daughter texted you. Yep. What'd she say? She said, hey, Dad, Dad talked to us, said he's going to be okay. So it took a load off me, but still, you know, so many other people... I mean, it could have been me. I was right next to my buddy. That could have been me that got shot. So, you know, very thankful right now. Did you actually hear the bullets hit? Did you hear? You know, you actually heard some of the bullets hit the the fencing. Yeah, it's aluminum, and that's how we, you know, we. That's pretty much how we kind of knew this was not firecrackers. And then my buddy got shot, obviously. But we did hear some hit the aluminum fencing. I mean, you're incredibly strong. You're. you're Standing through this, you're an avid hunter. You've been in situations that are chaotic and, and maybe not similar to this, but difficult. But you know, it's just impressive how you've you've withstood all of this. I try to <laughs> try to keep your head, you know, and uh, do what you can. I mean, like I said, I, I, there's pl tons of people that were true heroes tonight. And, and George, we've talked a lot about luck as well tonight. And uh, Mike's girlfriend actually fell ill earlier today, and so she decided to stay in the hotel. Or she could have been along with you guys yeah, too. Yeah, she was. She actually came to the concert and left like uh, about an hour in. She just, it was too hot, you know. So I'm very thankful that she got sick, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> right now, Mike Kronk, who was at the concert when the shooting broke out. Mike, just a horrifying scene right there. Tell us what you went through. Um, it was very horrifying. At first, uh, it sounded like fireworks, and then, uh, my buddy that was standing right next to me uh, said, I'm hit. And then we knew it was real. And uh, it was chaos. We got him down and people screaming. And uh, 
He got hit right in the chest. Just pretty horrific. My my buddy got shot three times in the chest. How is he doing? I, I last I heard, I haven't been on the you know leave here, but he said he was going to be good. My goodness. So tell us what happened in those moments afterwards. How did you all get out of there? We uh, most people started scattering and they uh, climbed the fence, but I had to stay with my buddy there. So we uh, got him over the fence once the fires stopped and slid him under a stage so we were safe. Hi. And then we uh, we transported him around the backside of the event. How did you get him around? How did got you him stop over the to bleeding? the triage? There was three of us carrying him, and there was a cart. And so we got got him on the cart, and we wheeled that around. So you were able to get him to the triage, and then where did you all go next, and how did you find safety? Well, I wasn't really worried about the safety part because uh, I was going to stay with my buddy. Um, there were no ambulances available, really, because it was a, a fire zone. I, so I, we actually got four wounded people in the back of a truck. I know you got four wounded people in the back of the truck, but not all of them made it. No, and we, uh, it was, it, no one of the guys in our truck uh, did not make it either. I carried him out of the truck and he passed away in my arms. Oh, I can't imagine what that must have, must have been like, but you had the presence of mind to try to get people to safety, but this all unfolded so quickly. Very quick, it, it was, it's surreal. And in, in, in those moments, where were your thoughts? My first thoughts were for my buddy, you know, I mean, I wanted to make sure he was taken care of. But, um, you know, we were pretty much yelling at everybody to stay down, you know, that was, that was what we needed to do. Well, we're glad you're okay now. So sorry for your friend and all those who've lost uh, their lives and loved ones in this. But Mike Cronk, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you. The numbers are just staggering. 527 injured, 59 killed. So many of those that were critically wounded were brought to hospitals like this one, where this morning there are incredible stories of survival. Just let me tell you, you're one of the lucky ones. Rob McIntosh shot three times. His friend Mike Crunk putting his own life in danger to stay with his buddy. Thanks for staying with me. The worst of times bringing out the very best in so many.
Rob McIntosh was shot three times, twice in the chest, once in the arm, all with a single bullet. It went uh, in me here, it came back out, it went in, and it came out, and it lodged in my arm. Dude, if you go back in that store to God, don't do it, please. We need gloves. We need gloves. Look at me. We need like four pairs. I don't know if we're going to get it. I don't know if we're going to get it. Are you shot? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Wait, wait. We're running out of room in here. <laughs> Look at me. Hey, start laying people out here. Are you shot? Going that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got chest wounds. Got chest wounds. Hey. Okay, can you breathe? Go. Are you with this person? You not too hard. Not too hard. Can you breathe? No How long ago was that wound? First shot. A lot of these are going to be ricocheted. First shot. Okay. Listen, hey, we're, we're gonna, hey, we're going to push this. Here. Here, I'm gonna, we're gonna push this. Listen, we're going to do this if we have to for a sucking chest, okay? For a sucking chest, we're going to do this, okay? I have, the hole. I have my finger in the hole. Okay, okay looks like you have a feeling through. Okay, listen, we're going to take this. Shit. Okay. Hey, we got no metro here. Do you, want me to keep my in? do you feel a pulse under your finger? Do you feel blood flowing under your finger at all? How do you feel? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if I take my finger out, I get blood coming. Okay, keep your finger right there then. Okay. You got to, right now, I need to get one of your guys out here right okay. now. Right now. Okay. If you have that, yes. Give me 30 seconds. Sorry. Okay. We'll put on gloves. Help out whoever you can. Okay. Yeah, Go away! Go away! Hey, grab this guy. What's your name? Rob, Rob where are you from? Alaska. Alaska. Yeah, you guys need any help out there? Alaska. You need any help, sir? I need to get this. I don't know, man. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of people in this position right now. Oh my god, we have everybody coming. Everybody's coming. We're doing what we can. We're doing what we can. We got a bunch of people in House of Blues right now, too. We're keeping them in one area. Rob, you're doing a good job, man. Rob, bigger stone there right now. Goddamn, Rob, you're doing a fucking fantastic job. I think it's a fluid. Hang out and do it. Thank <laughs> you.
Stay with her. Stay with her. We got this. Keep it there. Keep it there. I'm with you. I'm, he's my brother, man. I'm going to stay here and help. Good. I'm glad. Hey, I'm, I'm a military medic. Can I go inside and help? Go inside and help. Thank you. Put some gloves on. It might be a fucking check. It could be. He's got his finger in the hole right now. We've also got another secondary here. Yeah, my finger in a hole. What do you this need? one is critical. What do you need? What do you need? What, do you need? what, do you need? what, what am I doing? We can't. We, we can't pack Only it. Because because we're going to put an occlusive on it. Okay. You're doing really well. Uh, you're you're another. Okay. You understand? We got one here. Look at one more here. Look at this one. Troy, where are you going? Troy. He's, he's stopping the bloody flesh. Yeah, no, I just, I yeah, need to do this. Okay. This is going to be one of the main ones to go first. Doc says one of the first to go. Rob. 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 Yep, I've got a whack from there's no blood coming from this at all. Rob, how you doing? I'll come back. Doc, you wanna see his eyes? Hang in there, Rob. Hi Rob. Wink your eyes, Rob. Hey, 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 come on, we need medical coverage, hey! Hey, we need medical coverage, that's what they want, okay? Rod is upstairs, you, another wife will need. We're here with the medical. You want me up there? Rod is not upstairs, I don't think you need to be up there. We got one down over there that needs to be extracted, but I don't know if that's a hot zone or not. I don't know, it's a hot zone. Okay. Doing good, buddy. Doing good. 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 Doing good.
Las Vegas survivors have reacted with fury after video clips appeared on YouTube calling the shooting a hoax. Videos with various conspiracy theories have been watched by millions. Well, our technology correspondent Rory Catherine Jones is here in the studio with me. And uh, Rory, tell me more about these hoax videos and the response there has been from uh, the many families who've uh, heard about this. Well, it's not a surprise when a any kind of incident like this happens, YouTube actually becomes a huge platform for all sorts of conspiracy theorists. 9-11, uh, uh, there are tons of conspiracy theory videos up there, and very quickly on this occasion, uh, a similar thing happened. Uh, the, the kind of conspiracy theories being promoted were false flag. Uh, the idea that uh, the whole thing was staged by the government in some extraordinary way. You know, 22,000 actors were hired to, to fake this. Uh, and if you look through the comments on some of these videos, it's obvious that quite a lot of people believe this. I think, though, what's really concerning is not that these videos exist, uh, that's disturbing enough, but that in some cases they appear to be promoted by Google, by YouTube sort of algorithms that the, you put in a search for information about this event and up at the top comes not the real news but the fake news. I'll come to the response from the authorities in a moment or two but in terms of the response from the families, what has been said? Well, they've, it's completely obvious how distressing it is if you've been caught up in an incident like this. They've said, we know what the truth is, we were affected, we've had loved ones shot. Uh, and and uh, it's a disgrace that, that YouTube is not doing something about this. They want these videos actually taken down. Uh, so tell me more then about uh, the response there has been from YouTube. What have they said? Well, it's a quite a bland response. We've got a little statement from them uh, which says, uh, when it comes to news, uh, we have thousands of news publishers that present a variety of viewpoints available on our news channel. They're basically saying that um, it, it's not up to them to censor. Uh, they're going on to confirm, though, uh, we got a, a separate message saying none of the videos reported to us breached our guidelines. And here's the issue. Um, uh, Google, YouTube, other web publishers feel that it's not for them to actually uh, determine what sort of quotes news content we receive um, and uh, to act as a kind of censor. But what a lot of people are asking is, is it their responsibility to decide what is promoted? Well, exactly. I mean, you mentioned other platforms because this is something not just that affects YouTube. Uh, other platforms have been grappling with exactly the same issue and controversies, haven't oh, yeah. they? This is an issue that we've seen explode over the last year, particularly in relation to last year's US presidential elections. Facebook uh, under the spotlight this week. Uh, in the early stages, amongst the trending stories popping up on Facebook were posts from 4chan, a kind of notorious uh, forum for people with uh, with very extreme views, uh, top stories giving inaccurate information about who was involved in this incident and what their motivations were. Um, and, and Facebook and Google alike basically blaming their algorithm, saying, difficult for us, we, you know, it, it, it's the computer has decided this. Although we have heard from Google today that uh, they have been tweaking their algorithms to, to, to try and deal with this issue. Uh, well, uh, Rory, thanks very much. And actually, when you read someone say, when I see my wife fighting for her life with gunshot wounds to her chest and my daughter also shot, it is pretty conclusive evidence that it did happen. You can see the distress that some of these uh, hoax absolutely. videas have absolutely caused. Absolutely, and we've seen it before, the, the Sandy Hook incident, the, those children killed, uh, being, those parents being told online that this didn't happen. You can see how offensive it is. Rory, thanks very much.